Hey, my name is Matt, and today's video is hopefully going to be the start of a series of videos helping subscribers with uh, issues they're dealing with in terms of writing content. I made the offer, hey, if you need an article written or you want some guidance or some help, uh, just write a comment and I'll try to uh, do something, do a video for you. So this is the first of those videos. Mindful in me left a comment. He said, I find phrase is better for high level generalizations. Can you show how to search an article by topic? And by using the topic competitor articles, a new post can be created. So basically, can, can you create a new post using these competitor articles? Can I show you how to do that using phrase? I asked for a topic and he said, woodworking or growing marijuana. Woodworking sounds like a great, uh, great option. Now, I did a lot of research on this. Yeah, I've worked with wood before. I've cut stuff. I've, I've built things out of two by fours. I haven't done like really fine detail work, but I know my way around a table saw. As I was looking at different topics and stuff, the, the woodworking niche I found is a very broad uh, niche and there's a lot of a lot of different directions you can take it. It's not something like SEO. Uh, let me give you an example. How to do SEO. When you, when you have a query like this and you go to the SERP, look at the, the domain authority here, 72, 95, 91, 73. This is a very, comp very competitive keyword, very competitive search phrase. And so what's great with very competitive things is there's so much fruit hanging off of each of these results that you can just pick and then add into your, your, your outline so much stuff like look at all this stuff it's all built out uh really great articles to uh, pick and choose things from and then create your own your, your very own article based on that competitor stuff unfortunately woodworking's not like that i after doing some keyword research woodworking you don't get a lot of great results as an example i went to google and i typed in woodworking and one way to find out what the competitors are ranking for is to find a site that's ranking for a very core term like woodworking. And then Brand Overflow, it's a good alternative to like something like Ahrefs. There's a ranked keywords and you can put in a, a, a website and see a thousand keywords that that website will rank for. So I put in popular woodworking and I sorted by stuff and I found something cutting rough lumber, okay? And they have an article, 12 tips for working with rough lumber. So taking this back to Google now, this and it has 4,000 search volume a month. Now this could be off by a magnitude of 10. This could be 4,000 or 40,000, I don't know. Um, but we can put in cutting rough lumber. And they have 12 tips for working with rough, rough lumber. Now look at, look at the results here. When we look at this, the, how to do SEO, Look at the, I wanna compare the two, compare the two types of results you'll see. So how to do SEO, five wave, ways to improve your site's ranking. That's essentially how to do SEO. SEO starter guide, the basics. That's essentially how to do SEO. Beginner's guide to SEO, that's how to do SEO. 10 do-it-yourself SEO tips, how to do SEO. You go all the way down here, can you do SEO yourself? Yes, this is number 19. There, everything, everything is on point with how to do SEO. When I go to Google for cutting rough lumber, I see 12 tips for working with rough lumber. Then I see nine steps to sizing rough lumber. Sizing is different than working with rough lumber. Six top tips for succeeding with rough lumber. I don't even know what that means. Succeed with, what are you gonna date the rough lumber? How to cut rough lumber, how to cut rough edge board. Okay, so that's different than sizing. How to buy rough sawn lumber. So. The problem with this particular query is there's just everybody, there's all kinds of articles. Google doesn't know exactly what somebody wants. So let's take this 10, this 12 tips. I could see that also possibly ranking for how to work with rough lumber. Let's see how to work with rough lumber. <clears throat> okay, that's rank number one. Tips for working with rough lumber for how to work with rough lumber. Let's look at the rest of the SERP here. Sizing rough lumber, buying rough lumber, planing rough lumber, rough sun, th th 13 easy ways to use it in your project. There's no consistency. And in situations like this, 
uh, number one, it would be easy to rank for something like this. But number two, you couldn't just put this into phrase and then look at what the competitors have written and write a better article because there's just, everybody's talking about different stuff. Everybody's talking, succeeding with Rough Lumber, uh, using it in your project. That doesn't really answer like how to work with Rough Lumber. So <clears throat> I kind of was doing some more thinking, okay, maybe we just go down a different avenue. And I started thinking about like, okay, construction stuff, like plywood maybe. So right now I'm kind of looking at cutting plywood. That's one of the, the avenues I went down towards like another search phrase as opposed to rough lumber. This tool is called writer's end. It's a search keyword tool. It's a lot less expensive than hrefs and semrush. In some ways it's better than brand overflow, but in some ways brand overflow is better than, than writer's end. I'll put a link to writer's end in the description below, along with a link to phrase. What's nice about writer's end <clears throat> is you can click on clusters and it will take all the, the keyword data for cut plywood and cluster it together. And then you can export it to an Excel file. So here's an exported Excel file and it's clustered everything together. Here are the keywords in the cluster. Here's the search volume for each keyword. And then here's the total volume for the cluster. And what that means is like, if you could write on the cluster, then you can possibly rank for all of these particular keywords. So let's see if there's something in here that we could then write about. Best circular saw for plywood. But I don't want to, for this video, go out to, to Amazon and start writing product reviews. But you could do that. You could write an article about the five best circular saws for plywood and talk about the pros and the cons of each. How to cut plywood with a circular saw. Now this is actually really interesting. If you want to make a higher level, the pillar article can be like plywood or cutting plywood. And then you can have best circular saw for, for plywood or to cut plywood, how to cut plywood using a circular saw, how to cut plywood with a jigsaw, how to cut plywood with a table saw. There's a lot of different cutting plywood uh, sub articles you could talk about. Laser cutting plywood. And so you can see the cluster here and then you say, okay, well, is there something in here that, that would be a good article title? Like, Best plywood for laser cutting. Oh, that's an article in and of itself. <clears throat> CNC, plywood service, we're not gonna do that. Best way to cut plywood at home. Now that's a practical. I can see a lot of people searching this. And see, look at this. So these are. this is great. Here are some great articles you can write. How to cut plywood with a circular saw. How to cut plywood by hand. How to, best five tips to cutting plywood in half or something like that. Is it easy to cut plywood? Okay, that's a really good cluster. I would definitely come back to this, uh, this cluster. Uh, let's see what else. How to cut plywood using a handsaw. So there's a lot of good stuff in here. Um, can you cut plywood with a handsaw? Why would you want to cut plywood with a handsaw? You know, these can all be part of your article. Five, five steps to cut plywood with a handsaw. So I think there's a lot of woodworking concepts in here that we could probably write some articles about. There's a lot of articles. You could have a whole little niche on, on plywood, a plywood niche, and one of your subcategories could be cutting plywood. Okay, so let's do something with this. Best way to cut plywood at home. And let's pick cutting plywood with a circular saw. And let's put that into Google and see what kind of articles we get. Because according to writer's end, there's 390 people, now it could be 3,090 people, you know, we don't know, that are searching this a month. And you could also theoretically rank for any of these. So you could theoretically get 640 search volume or 6,400 for, for ranking for one of these. And I would probably think you'd, you'd want to write about this cutting plywood with a circular saw. So I think we're, we're narrowing down the article we want to write about. The reason I'm doing a Google search on this now, I want to write about this, but I want to see what the SERP says. Are all of the art articles how to cut plywood with the circular saw or all the articles, re product roundup reviews, the 10 best uh, circular saws to use. Google has you know assigned a search intent, intent to this phrase, to this query. And so I'm trying to discover what that search intent is. Create circular saw cutting guides for plywood okay that's interesting no table saw here's how to cut plywood with the circular saw okay cutting plywood with the circular saw. tips 
easiest way to cut down plywood sheets. So it looks like a lot of these are, are just tips and tricks and, and a, like a guide, an informational guide on how to cut plywood with a circular saw. All right, let's write about that. I'll leave this, I'm gonna make a new document. Our query is gonna be cut plywood with a circular saw. So it looks like there's some stuff that we can pull from the SERP in here and talk about. The SERP's done processing. We have 18 of 20 results processed. Let's look at the SERP. So we click the outline and we click open SERP Explorer and we can get a, there, I mean, there's two ways to look at the SERP and phrase. The first is you go to the research box and you can scroll down and see all of the different SERP uh, in order of, of ranking. And you'll see, okay, here's the website. You click on it, you can go to the actual article, rank number one, 738 word count, DA is 69, that's very high, and then 12 backlinks to this. One, one indicator of the ability to possibly rank if you have a, a, a low DA site or just a very new site is finding a DA 25 or less in the top 10. It's a good indicator that you could then rank on, for, on the first page if you write a better article. 53, 40, it's going down, 80, 79, 41, 23, okay. The nice thing too about being on the first page is you can potentially grab the featured snippet. People on page two and, and whatever can't, but people on page one can. Okay, I think there's a possibility of ranking very high. Okay, so let's go to the outline and let's look at the SERP and see if we see some commonalities on the floor with full support. So full support's important. Blade depth, solid straight edge with clamps, okay. Test the guy for accuracy. Okay, I've cut plywood before. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good article right there. Prevent binding. I don't. So what's neat is as you're adding these, you can actually click on it and see the content. So you can see, oh yeah, this is relevant or or not. It's important to provide proper support. Eliminate dangerous kickbacks. Okay, so binding is probably under the support one. Wish I could group these somehow. I can't group them gang cutting okay you can gang cut that's cool that's you're stacking multiple sheets of plywood together i don't want to spend time and go through each individual one i think this particular article i'm not going to write a full article but i'm going to show you how to do it i'm going to show you how to write that article using what's in the serp already so we have some good stuff obviously how important this was to you if this was an important article that you wanted to just rank in number one, and this was uh, you know, very important to you, then I'd spend more time on it. If it wasn't as important to you, there's like a sliding scale. If you write enough content on the topic, you become the topical authority on that topic. And so in a way, having more content can beat out, like having 50 articles on cutting plywood can make you the authority on plywood as opposed to like three articles on plywood that are very long and accurate articles. So you have to figure out what you want to do. What's your goal? Let's save the outline here. Now at this stage, you could do a couple things. Phrase has an AI draft and you can have phrase rewrite the competitor's content. We need to feed it a short introduction. One way to do that is you can generate an introduction using an AI template. Another way is we can just pull an introduction out of the SERP. That's good. You want something short for the AI writer, but kind of to the point. You know, this is probably a pretty good background context. <clears throat> so we go back to the outline, we click AI draft, and what we can do is we are gonna rewrite the competitor's content. We could also click summarize, and that's gonna give you more of like a bullet point out outline, which can be useful for other situations. Write new AI content is all phrase is gonna use is those headings. The rewriting is going to use the headings that the uh, that the uh, it's going to use these headings plus the content inside uh, whereas the write new ai content is just going to use these headings so there's there's a significant difference uh, let's rewrite the competitor's content start the draft so you're going to get a lot of content quick when we were in that outline with the with each serp result like in that vertical list it will tell you how many words each of those h2s or h3s are in my opinion, if you pick an H2 with like 20 words, you're not gonna get decent output. I mean, this might've been 50 words right here, so we're not getting a lot. If 
you have a choice between two H2s from two different results that talk about the same thing. Pick the one that has more words. The other difficulty with this sometimes you can get some plagiarized content. The AI is not a perfect rewriter. It's hard for AI to rewrite content. I know because I've probably spent two to 300 hours writing AI templates and making a rewriter is hard. Let's just, let's just say that. So you'll have to run this through some kind of a plagiarism uh, checker, whether it's Grammarly or Copyscape or something and just double check. Sometimes too, whenever it's dealing with numbers, you, you just got to check that the numbers are correct and the facts came out correctly. Sometimes things get swapped around and meanings change. So this is something you definitely want to proofread. You don't want to just say, okay, look, the article is done. Let's go publish this. You can click on these over here and see what the SERP said initially, and then you can compare it to what the AI writer wrote. So this says, cut plywood sheets on the floor with support. So the, I think the gist of what this was laying your plywood on a flat surface that you're going to cut because you don't want, if you're putting it on a sawhorse, you could get a bend or a bow as you're cutting and that could throw off things. You should use sawhorses to make sure your work stays steady. Plywood is very hard to cut on the floor. This could cause your work to be unstable and fall over otherwise. So look, so it's kind of changed the meaning a little bit. And, and that's one of the reasons why an AI rewriter is difficult because the meaning can change. Uh, and this is, this is the problem no matter what AI rewriter you use, whether it's phrases or some other competitors. This is the problem AI rewriters have. So this says you should use saw horses to make your work steady. Okay, this says you can use saw horses, but when you want a really smooth finish, I always cut on the floor. This guy, the AI said plywood is very hard to cut on the floor because there isn't enough support underneath. So that's not true. So that's that's one of the problems with, with this AI rewrite in the draft. Sometimes you don't get good stuff. I think it fails more with content that it's not 100% sure about, such as cutting plywood. Now, if you were to have it write about SEO, I think it would do a much better job. So we're going to try a different approach now. All right, we're going to try three things. The first thing is not going to use any of the content from the SERP at all. We're going to see how good the AI can just do, do by itself using one of my templates. But we're going to rewrite this to kind of encourage it. Uh, cut plywood sheets on the floor for full so for uh, what did it say let's go to the SERP there we go for full for there you go for stability and support well, let me just show you why I rewrote this showing is better than explaining type in RT you're gonna see all my templates that I've made and shared with the community then type in the word paragraphs. You're gonna see all my paragraphs templates, and this is the bread and butter right here. The, the paragraph from scratch, there's two versions here, is all it wants is basically your H2 or your H1 and your H2. That's all you need, very, very simple. That's relying heavily though on what the AI knows, okay? Now, if the a if it's a more obscure topic or the AI maybe doesn't know a lot about it, then you want to give it a little bit of help. This is the the template kind of in the middle now. Okay, the the paragraphs from scratch was let the AI just do its best. Paragraphs from keywords, okay, is in the middle. We have our H1, we have our H2, but now we we pepper it with a, with one to three keywords. We could have the AI write about this, but maybe it doesn't really know a lot. So we could say a keyword could be um, support, stability, uh, sawhorse. Oftentimes you'll get a lot better output on a topic that's a little bit more obscure for the AI's uh, virtual neurons. Now, if the AI needs a little bit more help than that, okay, if it's still struggling, you can guide it even more with paragraphs from facts. So this is our H, our main topic, our H1 up here, our H2, but then we need like two sentences, full sentences between 10 to 20, 40 words for a background. You know, 
the reason you should cut plywood on the floor is because the floor offers more stability and support. Cutting plywood on the floor is offers a, a better cut than cutting it on a sawhorse. Okay, that's a great background. It doesn't have to be super well written. It doesn't have to sound really good because the AI is just going to use that to understand what you're talking about. And then one to four points about the sub topic in dash mark format. So you'd say the uh, place a sheet of ply wood under the sheet that you want to cut. So that could be one of our points. You have a little dash, a space, a lowercase, and no period. So you do one to four of those. And then what you'll get is a, something a little bit more guided on these, these situations where the AI just doesn't know what to talk about. So let me do one of each actually, and we're, we're just going to see what happens. And I'm going to do one of both of these two. So this is the, the H2 right from the, the SERP. And this is the H2 that I kind of reworded because I'm, I'm even using the H2 to, to kind of guide the AI. So we'll go back to the, the scratch. Here we go. And here is our higher level concept. And here is our lower level concept. And I'm only going to do like one or two generations of each. So it, it, you kind of have to do a couple of each to get a fair comparison. So this is, isn't going to be like the best comparison. All right. So there's that. Plywood is a type of wood used for making furniture and other items. It's usually sold in four by eight sheets, which are commonly referred to as plywood. When cutting, it's best to use a table saw instead of a circular saw. Okay. Okay. So it's not really talking about a circular saw because the AI thinks in its head that, that a table saw is best. So we're going to actually do something first to even further guide the AI. Okay. Let's try that. So we're telling the AI, hey, we don't have a table saw. So let's see what we get. That's not bad. So all about what plywood is. When cutting plywood, you'll need to decide whether you want to cut the sheet on the floor or on a workbench. The latter option is much easier. That's a workbench. However, you choose to cut the sheet on the workbench. You'll need to make sure you have enough room to cut the plywood on the floor. You'll need to set up a temporary workstation. You need to put a piece of plywood wood under each corner of the sheet and clamp the corners together. Once you've done this, you can begin cutting the sheet. It's recommended that you use a circular saw with a guide bar. I mean, there's some stuff that's good, like this is good here. The whole clamping stuff. Uh, I don't know. We'll leave that in there. This is the second one. The second one talks about a circular saw more, it looks like. Plywood is a common material used for building projects. It's available in different thicknesses and sizes, making it easy to cut into smaller pieces. However, cutting plywood without a table saw is tricky. The problem is the wood tends to split apart if you try to cut it on the floor. To avoid this issue, you can use a circular saw instead. With a circular saw, you can easily cut plywood sheets without having to worry about splintering. Just be careful not to cut too close to the edge of the sheet, otherwise you could end up damaging the surface, okay? To make sure you don't damage the surface of the plywood, you could use a piece of scrap plywood to protect the area you're going to cut. Okay. That's not bad. I mean, it's not ideal. So remember, we rewrote this H2. I'm going to try this H2 instead. Plywood sheets are used in many different projects, including furniture construction. However, cutting plywood sheets can be difficult without a proper setup. To make cutting plywood easier, set up a workbench on the floor. Make sure the plywood is stable and flat. Place a piece of scrap wood underneath to prevent it from moving. Lay down a straight edge. Position the circular saw over the straight edge. It's not bad. Let's try this one. We did two generations for each. Let's try what the, this one is. Plywood sheets are commonly used to build furniture walls and other structures, but if you're planning to build something big, if you're planning to build something big, you might consider cutting plywood sheets from the floor instead of from a workbench. It's much easier to cut plywood on the floor and provide stability and support while you're working on it. Okay. Now it's interesting up here, we have full support, but I don't think it didn't really talk about it in here because again, this wasn't like the best H2. So you really have to use your brain if you're going to use the AI a little bit to kind of rephrase the, the H2 to kind of suggest to it, hey, the floor offers stability and support. When you say floor with full support, like what does that mean? The floor is getting behind the wood. I'm encouraging the wood. But you, when you cut it on the floor, you're getting stability and support from the floor. 
So you, you have to use your brain to kind of reword these H2s so that the AI kind of knows what it's going to talk about. Plus, you already saw up here. Now we're getting a lot better results. Now it's not; it knows we don't have a table saw. Now it's talking about a circular saw, at least in both of these, which is nice. It's easy to cut plywood sh sheets from a flat surface, but it's harder to do so from the floor. That's why the best setup. It's best to set up a stable base before starting to cut. For example, you could lay down a piece of scrap wood or concrete blocks to prevent the plywood sheet from moving during the cutting process. Once you've finished cutting, you can move it to its final destination. Okay, yeah, that's great. I mean, I, I like that actually. Now we're gonna do one more. We're gonna try the, um, the this is, we're just gonna ditch this, the bad H2, um, H2. We're not gonna use that anymore. And we're gonna label this. This is from the from scratch output. Now I wanna do a from keywords output. And we can compare all three, okay? So let's go and do from keywords. So our H2, our subconcept, and here's our main concept. Now, I'm gonna help the AI a little bit. We're gonna say, the first keyword is circular saw. We're gonna say stability, and then uh, what was the other reason? Better better cut. These are the, the keywords we want the AI to write about. It might not use those exact keywords, it might just use those as like a jumping off point and to write about something. But usually with the from keywords, we get a better tailored output. And then we're gonna have from facts. And sometimes you get a longer output too, and that's what it looks like happened. I'll do one more generation while we're inserting this. And the reason it's longer sometimes is because the AI has more, more to work off of now that we've provided some keywords. Plywood's a common material used in home improvement projects, but cutting plywood sheets on the floor is not ideal because it requires extra steps and tools. Instead, use a circular saw to cut plywood on a workbench. This way, you'll get stable, a stable surface to support the plywood sheet, but you don't have to worry about the blade slipping off the edge. Yeah, so this is not a good result. This is saying don't cut it on the floor. This one is good, though. Wow. So with some of these, these AI templates, you gotta generate twice. When cutting plywood sheets on the floor, you use a circular saw. This tool provides stability and support, making it easier to cut plywood sheets. The circular saw works well because it's stable and doesn't require a table saw. So let's try the from facts. Now the from facts requires some research from the SERP first. So we go to the research up here and we're gonna click headings. And then you can filter by keyword. I'm gonna say floor. I only get one H2 with floor in it, and that's great. That's what we wanted here. So we want an introduction. You need one or two sentences. So here's what I want for the first sentence. Again, we're not gonna, the AI is not gonna copy this. It's just gonna use this as a jumping off point. When I want a really smooth finish, when I want really smooth finish cuts on an expensive sheet of plywood, I always cut on the floor using a circular saw. That way, I'm sure to get a solid. I'm sure to get solid, stable support, so the plywood won't move, even if I have to climb on top of it to complete my cut. It was changing first person to third person. Okay, those are my two sentences. Now I need some some bullet points. All right, now we're gonna try this. So paragraphs from facts. So our two sentences go here. Our two bullet points go here. Delete the space in between them. If you expand this, you'll see that there's a space in between. We're just gonna delete that. And then our H1, main topic, our H2. Cutting plywood sheets on the floor is a great way to save money while getting a professional looking result. You can easily cut plywood sheets without a table saw by laying them down on the ground and cutting them with a circular saw. This method works well for small pieces of plywood. However, if you're planning on cutting large sheets of plywood, you might want to consider buying a circular saw with a built-in table. With a table saw, you can cut plywood sheets into smaller pieces and then glue them together. Okay, that's a bunch of freaking nonsense right there. You can use a table saw to cut plywood sheets into larger pieces. In addition, you can use the saw to create decorative edges. 
Some of the stuff's really good. Some of the stuff is kind of flaky. I, I don't know why we'd be gluing things together. What you can do with your generations is you can take stuff from, from multiple. So I like this stuff up here. This is the, the first part was good, and then it kind of trailed off into La La Land. Using a circular saw without a table saw is much easier. When you use a circular saw, you don't have to worry about the plywood moving around. Also, you don't have you don't have a blade that could accidentally slip off the edge of the plywood. The circular saws are also safer to use than table saws. Table saw blades can easily slip off the edge of a piece of plywood. This could cause serious injury. So if you want to cut plywood sheets without a table saw, then you should consider buying a circular saw. Hey, that's pretty good. We, we weren't writing about how to cut plywood sheets on the floor using a circular saw, but it was talking about why you should, okay? And it kind of answered that. It's you're going to save some money, get a professional looking result. You lay them on the ground. It's easier. You don't have to worry about the, tip, the plywood moving around. Yeah, this is pretty good. Let's do one more generation just to see. And by the way, I'll put the facts back in. See, we didn't, you didn't use the word two by fours. It didn't use the word perpendicular, but I think it, it used some of this to kind of make those connections in its brain to at least talk about something that's a little more relevant. You can definitely tell that this is more relevant than everything else we've gotten. Okay, so what would I use? I actually liked the first one. I like the paragraph from scratch, but I hope you can see this was like a little bit more general but we really started to talk about some specifics and it seemed a lot more on point with this paragraphs from facts. The paragraphs from keywords really just seemed off. Uh, I get really great results with this when the AI knows a little bit more about it. Now, mindfully me, this is a long video. I apologize for that, but I'm trying to go through these templates to kind of show you how I would be doing this, how I would be, be working through this process, thinking about how I could uh, use the AI to, to write about the competitor's content. You could always just use your own brain or knowledge to, to write about this stuff. You could, I'm not a great writer personally. Now, maybe you're a great writer, but you can just go to the SERP and you can go to the headings and you can put in a floor and you can just use your brain to rewrite this stuff. I mean, that's one viable option. Or you could have the AI do it. I mean, that's the other option. Multiple ways. You can go into the outline, make the AI draft. You can go into the AI writer and use uh, templates and community templates to do that. You just have to figure out what works best given uh, what you're trying to accomplish in the subject matter that you're writing about. Because some subject matter is better for the AI. Some subject matter is more difficult for the AI. Some subject matter is better covered in the SERP. Some's not. So it, it really just depends. The, the plywood niche or the woodworking niche is a very hard niche. Uh, it's a very uh, narrow niche. I think I answered to the best of my ability uh, what Mindfully Me was asking. If you have a niche uh, that you want me to kind of like poke around at and explore and see how phrase could uh, be used for that particular niche, uh, just drop me a comment and I'll try to do it when I have some time. And if you have anything else to ask about phrase, uh, just drop that in the comments and I'll try to either show that to you or, or demonstrate it on video. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please like this video, share it with your friends, and I'll see you soon.